live. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to the semifinals of the GCSL tournament. Uh, this, of course, Rome 2 Siege tournament. And today, helping me commentate on, on the uh, matchup today, we've got Ellington. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Me for this one. I'm really excited. Two yeah. really good teams. Not a uh oh. You hear me? Yeah, your mic's lagging a little bit, but. Yeah, two really good teams going here. Yeah, two really good teams. I mean, they have to be to make it to the semifinals. Uh, so, in today's matchup, we have. So, the two teams are Rising Kings and we have Carpe Venum, which uh, my Latin is not the best, but I'm pretty sure it means seize the wine. Uh, so, yeah, good name. Um, uh, Carpe V personally faced them in the first round, so I they are very good. Um, you know, we were we were really excited for this tournament and knocked out round one. That was fun. <laughs> Great. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people from the last tournament uh, were knocked out really early. It was really it was surprising. Rough. Yeah, but you weren't the but only I can, one. I can tell good. They're very good. Amazing King, I, I've you know seen a lot of the players. They are also really good, so I'm really excited. I think it's... Uh, Ellington, I think your, I, mic, your mic is cutting in and out. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just cutting out in and out a little bit. Dark. Uh, sorry about that. Thank you for beating him in arms. I appreciate it, man. No worries. It's still cutting out a bit. <laughs> hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I think that. All right. But no, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of this map as well. Yeah. Um, I think it's a map that, you know, considered very defender heavy, um, mm -hmm. but I think there's different ways you can go at this. Yeah. Um, so it'll be the uh, uh, Rising Kings go about it in this first one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't think uh, I've seen an attacker win this yet, so I'm curious to see how this is going to play. So really quick, uh, diving into the army comps. We'll start with Rising Kings here. Um, so they are going at it with Epirus. Uh, we have, next up, we have uh, Bowie And then we have the Arverni. So what are your thoughts on these armies? Um, definitely, I think that they have gone for a really good build here. You know, Arverni's got very good infantry, and Bowie Eye's sword followers are very, very good. Yeah. Um. And then with Epirus, you can bring the Royal Peltist um, units, and those are really, it's one of my favorite units. Um, and I know Epirus looks like has. So, uh, oh. I think it'll be interesting. Thank you, Matt, for being a man arms. I think that'll. Uh, I think you're lagging out a little bit again. It's like going in and out. I don't know. You're just sick. Okay, no worries, no rush. Hey, it's it, the the people can wait. One, two, three. Thank you for the ten pounds. Sup, brother? Thank you, thank All you, right. buddy. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear now. Yeah, I just think that uh, it'll be interesting to see how they play with the infantry. Yeah. Um, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Like that. That's. <sighs> um, obviously, we can't see the defenders at the moment. Um, unfortunately, this is the attacker perspective yeah well we can see that they're bringing tylus they are bringing galatia and uh what is the third one? Oh, yeah massilia has got the uh, jack they, thank they, you for being a king enter, like they can bring the mercenary gallic hunters um and then they kind of the quasi barbarian greek faction Yes, uh, you were lagging there again. I don't know what's going on. You were completely fine when we started. Lemon, thank you for being a knight. Silver Sword, thank you for the ten. 
<laughs> Thank you, Silver. Uh, is it your internet or is it a mic issue? I, I think it might just be the internet thing. Sometimes when I'm streaming, it makes Discord go really weird. And I never oh, well, do you want to use a different communication? I mean, in, is there a, a different, like, st is Steam? We could try Steam or TeamSpeak. I don't know if you have TeamSpeak. Oh, yeah, we could do TeamSpeak. Okay. Um... You want to do the uh, second chord, team speak? Uh oh, where he go? Hold on, guys. Just having a little technical difficulty. Second chord, team speak. One second, fine people. Fine Knights of Apollo. The hell? Oh. Do, 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 do. Uh oh. Hello, Ellington. Ellington. I'm here. Can oh, you hear me? okay. There you are. Yeah, I'm here. Do you want to do the second core? Team speak. Uh. Ellington. Oh, there you are. All right. Right, Ellington, can you hear me? Uh oh. Ellington? One, two, three, thank you for the five. Wait, isn't this the map the cheaters got hammered on? Uh, maybe, yeah. Thank you. I don't think, actually, no, I don't think it is. Uh, when. Oh, that's right. I want to push the talk on here. Push the mute. Uh, you are late. It's okay. We still love you. Thank you, Win. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Nathan, for the thirty-eight ninety-nine. Uh, can you hear me in here, Ellington? Check my Discord. Oh, oh. Uh, okay. Let's stick with the. Let's stick with um, Discord for now. L let's try something else. Hey, Ellington. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, maybe. Uh, try talking a little bit now. Nathan, thank you for the thirty-eight. Can you hear me now? Hello, hello. Yeah, hello. yeah, I can hear you. Okay. But um, yeah, it sounds good so far. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've never like got like, does not like when I stream for some reason. Oh, it's a streaming issue. Hey, it just seems like you, when I stream, Discord just goes weird. Uh, does it work better in a channel? Maybe because we're in a private mm -hmm. chat. No, it's usually a channel or chat. Okay. Hmm. Do you want to try Steam? Uh, yeah, we can try Steam. Here, let me get my. Are we? We're friends on Steam, right? I don't think so. Uh. Actually. Ellie. Let me get my friends code. I'll send it to you here. Okay. There you go. There we go. You send it? Mm hmm. All right. Hey, don't be saying that. Okay, accepted. All right. And let me try a Steam call. I don't think anybody's ever called me on Steam. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. I mean, you sound good right now. It's just like every time we're about to start, <laughs> you'll just like cut in and out. Yeah, it's it's weird. I don't know what's going on with it. Because <sighs> I would. Okay. 
Um, let's see. How do I even? Let's see. Uh, how do I add you to a call? <laughs> I never I use. I don't see you online. Send a online. voice request. Or... Yeah, sure. All right. Where's the voice chat? Did you enter it? Uh, no, I don't. It says you anything. ended the voice chat. <laughs> I can't even find you. Every time I send it to you, it says Ellington has ended voice chat. I never got a voice chat. That's weird. Well, it just hates us, Ellington. That's all I have to say. It's just one of those things. I swear, some of you guys are so impatient. Here, and try that. I sent you one. Hello. Hello. How about that? Can you hear me? Uh, let me disconnect. All right, hello? Hello? <laughs> I can't hear him. Hey, you know what, guys? You know what? I could just not stream. Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, there we go. So, I forgot that I have pushed to mute on. So, I was pushing to talk and it's pushed to mute. <laughs> yeah, I have a push to talk on. So, that way you don't have to hear me talking to my chat. <laughs> All right. How about this? Can you hear me now? Does I can. sound okay? Yep, yep. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, I mean, so far it sounds good. Um, that's weird. Okay, sweet. Discord just hates you. Yeah, I you. don't get it. Discord's just weird. I don't get it. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, are you ready to get this? I going? am ready. Uh, we'll press play on one. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to get used to push to talk. <laughs> oh, no. If you ever hear, you hear me, me go... Right now? Yeah, I can hear you right now. Okay, perfect. If you ever hear me not say anything, it's probably because I forgot to hit the push to talk, so... Okay. <laughs> they, uh... Oh, wait. wait. Oh, you know, oh, the, oh this is going to get so confusing. Hold on. I got to fix this. I got to fix this. Is there a push to mute? Yes, there is. Because I... What it is, my push it's... to talk is the same as the push to mute on my Discord, so I'm going to think I muted myself, but really I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is a push to mute um, if you go to your voice settings. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Can you hear me? Wait, let me see. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, good. And then I'm going to test it. Right. Mute, mute, mute. Can you hear me now? Okay, we're good. We're good. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Profound chair. Thank you for the two. Gotta love it. Yeah. This yeah. has been far more this has been a far more entertaining start. Dude, right? what's more of a battle? <laughs> the Rome 2 battle or, or us trying to fight technical difficulties? I man, the I hardship. don't know. Because like I mean I feel like technical difficulties just go hand in hand with Rome. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true, it's very fitting. Alright, uh let's do this. Okay, on one. Three, two, one. Alright. There we go. Battle time. Yes. Okay. So I'm really actually surprised with where Epirus has put his his ballista here. It's very, very exposed. Yeah, where is that ballista? It's right in front of the gate here, um, right there by Bowie Eye. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at what they did with their towers. Look at what the attackers did with their towers. Yeah, I saw... The gorilla deployed that. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that uh, before. Or I've seen. I think I saw that in the last ep or last semifinals where they just pushed them up, and it's pretty smart because it's less of a push uh, for you know when you but get. Not your only that, look at the angles of where they set them up with their guerrilla troops. Mr. Lemon, and thanks. Look at what they Joe, they thank shot. You. They set them up so the scorpions on top of the tower shot the crew from the artillery on the walls. Uh, where's this? Um, oh, look oh. at all their towers next to the walls. Oh, yeah, I see that. I see that. You look at all of their towers. They're oh, all set up with their, yeah. with their scorpions. Wow. It's a super smart move. Super smart move. That is smart. I thought, okay, I always thought you had to have troops pushing up, like, to have the scorpion guys. But, yeah. 
Nope. That's that's really yeah. smart. Yeah, that's thinking outside yeah. the box. I like that. So it does mean that, like, even though he left his ballista very exposed right there, their artillery has gone now. So, yeah, yeah, they don't they even have to shoot worry the about it anymore. That's really. Yeah. It, that's, that's, re it's a really good move. Really good move. Yeah, someone in my chat was like, "The towers are unorganized." No, actually, they're very organized. <laughs> Big brain. Because you can see all of these towers. Yeah, all of these towers are facing in the direction of one of the artillery emplacements. Yeah. So that they have a straight shot. That's to shoot the crew. Genius. Genius. Yeah. You could yeah. You can only do it if you have guerrilla troops. Um so our Verney used their archers, the guerrilla archers to move right. the towers and the tortoises. Yeah, just moved everything. Look at that. That's pretty that's pretty uh that's pretty awesome. Alright, so if you're just not joining the stream, guys, just want to remind you that uh, it is Rising Kings attacking and Carpe Venom, Venom defending. Um, and, and, like, now they're already getting on the tortoises here. Yeah, nice and, and quick. Epirus is pushing up a tower pretty close with some Sam Knight warriors in there. And you got, yeah, Arverni moving up as well. And so far, yeah. I don't really see a lot of defenders over here uh, on the Arverni no. side. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised by that. Um, usually you can kind of see stuff like that by now, and um, there's not really much. So I'm sure a lot of people watching, they know I hear, they hear me say, you got to defend the walls every time I upload a video of this. But I would say this is one of the maps that it's not terrible to give up these walls because yeah, of the inner choke I points. I mean, I still I wouldn't. And also, oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Well, I was just saying, and also, like, if you think of, like, how many tortoises are coming up, you're going to lose half of your wall anyways. Yeah. So, like, there's really not going to be much of a wall to defend anymore. Yeah, it's just going to be too much, too many uh, breaches in the wall. Yep. To hold. There's now we're starting to see defenders from Tylus. Yeah, Tylus. That's been a fan favorite in right this, in this tournament. Area. Yeah. Very, very. Um, they're very good, like, um, like good quality for their price. You know, the the tribal warriors have 95 armor. Yeah. So they can just tank pretty much anything you put against them. Yeah, they're they're extremely good. Uh, and that alone is why people pick Tylus as the tribal warriors. Yeah. Yep. And I'm, you know, one of the rules, like, you know, that we put in was the max seven melee infantry, um, which did prevent uh, people from doing one of the popular tactics with Tylus, which is pretty much all tribal warriors. Yeah. Yeah. Which is disgusting. OP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little broken. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty yucky. Epirus has pushed up some uh, Samnite Warriors far on the, from their point of view, the left flank. He's just kind of holding them there. Uh, so mm -hmm. they are pushing a bit out of that inner little uh, round ball area, this whole like round looking area. Uh, so they're trying yeah, to- call it the thrust and it always sounds very awkward when I say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we also have artillery firing as well into the center. Yeah. So. Oh, it's Misaisali. I know that in uh, Massilia, in sorry. your stream with Joe, uh, you guys talked about this center area where that little temple is just being a... That's where everybody puts their troops. And so you could see that Epirus has been firing into that area um, and gotten some kills there. He's gotten some kills in that center area by the temple. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's a good place. It's nice and open, so a lot of people will naturally put mm. a lot of reserves there. Uh, so it's a good target for artillery. Man, they just annihilated the walls. Uh, really chewed up. And no commitment yet into the breach. Yeah, I think they're waiting. What I do like here is that Arverni is supporting his attack. You know, I, I hate watching people put in one or two units into a breach, and then that unit just gets annihilated by the defenders. Yeah. But you can see that Arverni here is ready. Like, he's got all of his troops ready to move into that breach. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing we saw actually in the last semifinal is um, 
you got to make sure you have troops ready to move in when the time is right because opportunities arri arrive at, at, at like at a moment's notice you got to be able to take you know seize the wine so to speak seize seize the day take advantage of that yeah yeah so yeah it's good to see that <laughs> Got a big Massilia presence in the back here. Notice that? Yeah, yeah. It looks like they're going to be more of the support army um, in this matchup here. I don't know. It's probably a good idea. Oh, go ahead. What's up? Well, uh, I was just going to say, it's probably a good idea, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I always like to have one player be as a reserve, kind of support both flanks, you know, kind of thing. Uh, just, yep. a, just a heads up though, and I want to let the chat know, Steam voice is a little delayed, so we're going to probably be talking over each other every once in a while. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not like we're trying to be rude, it's just how Steam is. It's a, you know. Gosh, Apollo, shut up. Yeah, stop uh, stop talking over him, you're terrible. Yeah. It's alright, I, somebody's, I'll, I'll, I know there's somebody in your stream that's going to be like, dude, can this guy shut up so Apollo can do his stream? Oh, you know <laughs> it, you know it. It's so rude, okay. people are so rude. I saw somebody did oh, that. Oh, Sally out, Jones, Sally out. I was like, shut up. Yeah, uh, we got Celtic Warriors who sallied out against these Levy Freeman trying to defend the yep. gate. Uh, it's kind of a weird, well, I mean, do you think it's worth it? So, I like the idea of kicking the levy freeman off but Epirus was did the exact right move he was like i hate that's one thing that like people will send up like the the um siege ram with a unit all by itself to go up there mm -hmm. and it's all by itself and it's usually a cheap crappy unit right yeah so defenders are like well i'm, I'm just gonna go kill it right but Epirus was really smart here and had units right there and said hey if you're gonna come out that's fine but we're here, we're ready for it, you know. So nicely done by Epirus with this throw spears. For sure, and now Arverni is pushing in infantry, taking on the uh, Celtic warriors of Tylus. More and more Arverni troops are coming in, and uh, we also have a flank uh, not quite charging in over on the right flank, uh, where Glacia is ready to hold. They're kind of holding back their troops yep. there. Oh, there yeah, going for some of the uh, back Galatian legionaries with the Celtic bows here. Yeah, yeah. Nice shots there. Celtic bows aren't usually the best just because they only have 125 range, but if you can get them in this area where there's nothing countering them, they can do plenty of damage. Oh yeah, and after going going after barbarian faction is uh, perfect. You don't need the deadliest of archers to kill barbarians. No. And here comes a charge of Levy Freeman and the rest of the Arverni army pushing very aggressively to start taking the settlement. Bowie Eyes throwing some troops in too. I like the idea of putting too. the Levy Freeman first. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. could absorb some javies, you know. Um, they also have javies of their own they can throw in. So, it's a good unit. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with that. Getting those Levy Freeman in there, taking the javy shots, but then... What I would have done here after the Levy Freeman kind of took the brunt of that, I'd just pull them out at this point. You know, yeah. your your chosen swords are not being able to get the priority of the combat anymore. So I think at this point, they really should just take these Levy Freeman and take them out of the combat. Yeah, use them for another time. I mean, sometimes yeah. people have the mentality of just being like, oh, it's a crap unit. Who cares? Let them fight it out and die. It's like, well... Yeah, they're not the best, but you can use them on the flanks. They could absorb yeah. archer ammo. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Units are units, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in the end, like, you know, the, the name of the game is kills. So if you let a unit die just to die, like, I mean, that's going to count towards the end of the game. Right. You know, and I'm, I'm amazed that they actually, like, they are already through this gate area. Look at that. Yeah, they just, as soon as they started, you know, pouring in troops, it seems like they basically took it. Uh, really, Tylus over on the left flank is what's left holding this kind of outer wall area, but the rest have kind of fallen into the uh, the choke points. And this is a classic, yeah. classic retreat pattern here. You've got one, two, three choke points of the inner streets, and they're going to try to hold there. Yeah, this area is really good for the defenders because of that open plaza. Um, 
they have such good archer angles from there. Yeah, it, the hill. It's really hard for the attackers. Yeah, it's really hard for the attackers to get into this area and set up archers because the defenders are sitting right there waiting for them. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a trap. It's a kill zone. It's just you funnel into it and what can you do? You you can't do anything other than you're going to have to, you know, go through the greet uh the, you know, the meat grinder and yeah. hopefully you come out on top. But yeah, it's Yep, it's, you just have to tank it. Oh, hey, yeah. look behind Epirus. Massilian Cav back behind Epirus. Oh, here. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh so what is that? That is the Oh yeah, just Massilian Cav. So it's a medium melee yep. cav, and I don't know if they see them. They they appeared for a second. Now they're disappearing. Maybe they got away without being caught, and we might have an opportunity. Because I'm not seeing Epirus or the Arverni shift anything over there to deal with that. With some Thoreau Spears, actually. Nope. Thoreau Spears are facing the cav, so maybe, maybe they okay, did yeah, see it. Okay, yeah, so they see it. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised Arverni didn't adjust his heavy horse for it. I really wish they added... I, I wish it was more difficult to spot units like that in this game. Because I feel like setting up an ambush is almost impossible in Rome 2. Yeah. One thing I do like about this map, unfortunately not in that area, but there are actually quite a bit of forests on this map that you can use to kind of hide around. Um, that's one thing I don't like. You know, like Athens has a ton of trees around the map, mm -hmm. but none of them... You can't hide in any of them. None. Yeah, yeah. And so it's kind of, it sucks. <laughs> you can't hide anything. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I wish they had, like, scouting units, you know? So units that are, like... Yeah, some of that a, stuff would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if we look over here with Epirus and a little bit of Bowie Eye kind of pushing in as well. They're starting to clean up Tylus. They got some Celtic warriors that are breaking, but... Tylus still trying to fight for that breach point. And Epirus, if you look further down the wall... They're pushing up another siege tower. More Samnite War, or is it the same Samnite War? I think it's the same one because I don't think they've ever co they haven't commit over there. But if they do, I think he traded towers. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's trying to. Because the towers at ninety four percent fire damage. Oh, I see. The, yeah. the one that he was on, I think he traded towers. <laughs> yeah, if he takes this wall. That would be a big concern for the defenders because that's a whole another position they're going to have to hold. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, they're definitely threatening, which has made Tylus and Massilia have to kind of think about like, oh, wait, there's a unit over here. Wait, 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 you know. Yeah, spread out the defenders a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just the threat of a unit is, is enough, you know. Yeah, so if you if you guys are just now joining the stream, this is the matchup between Rising Kings and Carpe Venom. Venom, I'm never gonna get the name right. Uh, but this is the uh, Rising Kings are attacking and Carpe is defending. So uh, we've got Galatian legionaries and tribal warriors trying to hold back that center position. Um, they're doing pretty well, but. This is just a battle of attrition in the center here. It's going to come yes. down to who's barely going to come out on top. Now, do you think the defenders are going to go all in here? Or do you expect them to fall back? To be honest with you, I like this spot as a defender. With yeah. me, like, if I see the attackers all set up in this area, I'm okay with it. Um, because of that center plaza, once again, that center plaza is so controlling here. Mm -hmm. You know, where Tylus has, you know, his tribal warriors and you see the Massilian Celtic warriors. Um, this area is so, so good for controlling. Um, and the defenders have the infantry. Galatian legionaries are excellent in combat. Um, so it's it's going to be an interesting thing. I think it's going to come down to the angles for the attackers. They're going to have to get to the sides of of this center area. They need to get archer power, power into the sides of that mm that center mass yeah and i think that's so that's why it's so important for the defenders to keep those walls clean on the sides like prevent any attacking archers up on these walls because that's going to give them great opportunity to fire down to the flanks of the center absolutely i i, I completely agree with that 
Now you yeah. can see that Epirus is having a lot of trouble with with Tylus on that side. Yeah, on the Those wall. Those tribal warriors are just grinding him out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're probably gonna have uh, to send more. Yeah, I I kind of like I kind of wish at this point that Epirus maybe committed a royal peltist into that. Because what he's sending in, these Illyrian levies and the Italian swords are not going to beat the tribal warriors. Um, and if you can control the archer battle, you can get your elites into that combat and, and eat through those tribal warriors. Mm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think sometimes players are a little hesitant to send in elites, which makes sense. They want to save it for the late game. Uh, but sometimes if there's an opportunity to get through a breach point or a position, a defensive position with an elite unit, you should probably always take it. I agree. I definitely think that, you know, especially if you have the archer advantage, if you are if you have kicked off the enemy archers, there's nothing stopping you from putting an elite in, you know? Yeah. Um, like, throw them in there. But I think they're a little worried about, like, the Syrian archers from Galatia, maybe. Yeah, that could be it. They Yeah, they could be afraid to move up some good units to get pelt down by... By archers and that's what makes sieges so challenging is that there's just like a million scenarios that could happen that you have to keep up with and look out for and and i wish there was like an easy like oh just do this in a siege battle and you're gonna win but it just it yeah. all depends there's so many different scenarios it's all situational you know yeah. it depends on where they're attacking it depends on the factions the players the like there's too many variables to say this is how you do it. You yeah, know? yeah. But that artillery, Ooh. have you checked its kills? Uh, no, let me go see. Ooh, 205. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, good. Crazy amount. Wow. wow. They, they've done very well with that. Yeah, I think um, maybe they were feeling a little too safe in that open courtyard area. They probably yes. should have kept some units behind some buildings and... <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little bit. A little bit. Um, I, I think the I think the attackers are feeling feeling good right now. To be honest with you, um, like this attack looks good. It looks the, clean. The one place I'm concerned yeah. is Tylus, but um, like Bowie Eye and Arverni are just chewing through this defense. Yeah, Tylus is starting to thin out though with the infantry. They're down to 55 tribal warriors on the ground, but up top as well. You see how the um, the uh, Cretan archers of Epirus is firing at the backs of those tribal warriors on the wall. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's helping them a That's ton. A good shot. Yeah. Sam Knight warriors good are shot, good, though. too. So they should break through there if they keep it up. It's kind of interesting because, like, you have tank versus tank. You have two units with uh, 95 armor going at it on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a slugfest. Uh, and so far, Tribal Warriors have more kills, but let's see. How many units are left? How many men? 97 versus uh, uh, 62. 60. So the Samnites are getting the better out of that. Well, the archer, I think it's the uh, the Cretan archers that were firing on them. They're holding fire now, uh, but they gave them well, a couple look, volleys. Got a Tribal Warrior coming out, uh -oh. coming out of the breach there. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, now he's going back. Now he's, oh, he's going like, back. yeah, nope. Profound get, chair, oh, thanks yeah, for becoming a knight. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was a gutsy move. I'm surprised Epirus didn't send another tower into this wall. You see where they're, the Sam Knight warriors are fighting the uh, tribal mm -hmm. warriors? He could have just sent a really, even just a crappy unit, uh, just grab this tower and then push and get behind the tribal warriors that are holding your Sam Knight warriors. Yeah, I agree. Um, you definitely could have gotten through that a little faster. The one concern I would have would be archer fire from that plaza. But, That's fair. Like, it's a pretty long shot there. But like you said, if it's a cheap unit, like, mm -hmm. if it helps you break that tribal faster, then do it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, you, and that's the kind of mindset you got to have in, in Total War, in any Total War, really, is that if there's an opportunity to kill a really expensive unit, you know, go for it. You know, again, it's all situational. It depends on what's going on. But if you have a really cheap unit that could flank around and kill a really elite unit, you should probably go for it. Yeah, I completely agree with that. 
Yeah, you can see that Archer Boomer, fire thank you for the in. two. That already still has ammo. Wow, no way. No way. He's still shooting. See, patience is another important trait to have in, in good players because, uh, you know, they could have easily have just, like, unloaded all of their shots at the beginning, but they're waiting for them to group up, and that's what they're doing right there. And now they're opening fire again. Something that I like that the attackers are doing here is they're pacing themselves as as three separate factions. You don't see one team getting way out of the head of the others, um, mm -hmm. which helps you prevent getting singled out. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. You can see they are all kind of you can you can draw a line, and say you'd see there's nothing behind that line. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's or in front of that line, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, no, it, it, it teamwork is so important in uh, sieges. You gotta, you gotta have, you gotta be on the same page. And if you're not, like you said, you can get singled out and focused down and dead. You know? Absolutely, and, and dead. And D dead. D dead. <laughs> I can't even remember what movie that's from, but it's from some D E D dead. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I want to say it's The Ringer, but I don't know. The Ringer? Oh, God. Have you ever seen that movie? Yes. Yes, I have. Not You're well, a long time CD. ago. <laughs> Manish, you thank you for the two. I appreciate it. broke it. it. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh... Jeez, that's an old one. <laughs> that's an old movie. Uh, yes. Um, now, looking at army strength, uh, the attackers are looking really good, especially... Ar the yes. Arverni. Like, look at that cluster there he's got. And on the defending side, again, maybe it's because some units are hidden. I can't see them. Uh, but <sighs> Galatia and... They're and slim. Ty yeah. It's only Massilia that has the most. We haven't seen the Massilia in Cav in a while. Um, it yeah. never went and did anything, did it? No, but that's probably what he needs to do is... That's what I like to do. When I send out Cav and he gets spotted, just wait. They'll forget. They always forget. Mm -hmm. You know, they they'll, always, they forget. always forget. Okay, not always. Good players always keep a little <laughs> mental note of like, all right, there's Cav behind me. And they'll probably... And that's what you got to do. When, the minimap is so important. So important. Cause I you'll think see Everest accidentally got archers in combat. Oh, no. Did they? He went running him away. He didn't lose much, but uh -oh, they yeah. only have 97 kills, so I'm pretty sure they still have ammo. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sure they're saving their ammo for late game. In this map, you have to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With all those choke points. And Bowie Eye is now com yeah. committing infantry to take on the defense of the Glacian Legionaries in the center. Yeah. Do they have any Oathsworn in there? Doesn't look like it. Not yet. Not yet, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that he has this many units going in, though. Like, if you really think about lot. it, two of these units aren't really doing anything, and yet they're kind of exhausting themselves when they're not in combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost, yeah. It, I would say only, like, what, 20% of the, the huge group there is in, in combat? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very, very little. Yeah, so it's kind of a waste. Yeah, oh. I would take two of those units, and I would just kind of set them up behind yeah. or something. Because uh, they're they're getting tired, you know? They're getting tired. But they're the, oh, they're pushing. They're pushing. It looks like Glacia is reforming. They're sending up more troops to hold the center. Uh, really quick, I want to look at the kills of that artillery. 233. Oof. On which one? The, the ballista. Raymond, thank now. you for being a knight, buddy. I appreciate it. Oh. Yeah. So I wonder, they, they got their money. It's, it's got to be out of ammo. He's not. There's wait. He has one rock loaded. Mm. He has one rock loaded. So he has one shot left on that ballista. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, it's a good one. <laughs> Might as well use it now. Look at Masasile. That would be a good target. Yeah. There's some nice. Yeah. There's some nice targets there. But Thorax swords are getting really uh, pushed up to the front. Things are getting juicy over in the center. Epirus is pushing down the road over on his flank. Tribal warriors holding him off. And then another, uh, that that uh, tower with the Samnites is pushing again. Oh. 
with another tower. Well, maybe the time he finally lands, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's nothing up here uh, defending the wall, so he could mm -hmm. take it. And the closest unit is a Celtic warrior, and those Samnites will just eat right through that. Yeah, there's no no match for them. Uh, it might be time to fall back. I I think if you're gonna do it, now is the time. But yeah. Man, this is this is the time you make that decision because it's basically if you don't do it now, you are here, and that's you're not going anywhere. This like, you know, if if. It basically, if you don't leave here now, the game ends in this spot. Yeah. Win or loss. Yeah. You know it, what I mean? Yeah. You're putting it all in the, you know, you're going all in, basically, in this area. Yes. And I don't know if they've got the infantry to keep going all in here. Where, where is the defender's archers? I mean, I haven't really seen too much from them. He's got some mercenary Syrian archers opening fire, but I haven't. I think one of the reasons is that uh, Massilia's Gallic Hunters have the snipe ability. So, like, they could be completely invisible and still shoot. Oh, so, okay. Because yeah, because we're because we're looking from the attacker's angle, we wouldn't be able to see them all That's the time. That's true. That might be why. That, but that I would agree. Like I'm like, where are the archers? Yeah, I mean, it just it seems like I mean I'm not. It's not that the defenders are doing terrible. It just seems like the attackers are kind of controlling the battlefield or the siege right now. I agree. I agree. David, now, thank I, you for the I think two. The defenders did like this looks very similar to like if I was defending this spot. This is similar to what I would do. Um, mm -hmm. So like I, I I'm happy to see like this is a nice defense. This is a really good battle so far. Yeah, it's been a bloody one for sure. It's been. I mean, it seems like I feel like the defenders are going all in here. I mean, they've committed more thorax swordsmen. Yeah. I think this is all or nothing right now in this spot. Defenders yep. are saying we are not leaving here. Yeah, we're not falling back. Yeah. Which is uh, an interesting choice because I'm not sure that they're winning this <laughs> this uh, this infantry combat right now. Well, maybe they got something up their sleeves. Maybe they've got a lot of archers in reserve. They're going to push them up and, I mean, go after the barbarian infantry. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they, like, there's some options still out there. Yeah. And I, I think one, uh, sorry, go ahead. Go uh, ahead. I was just going to say, I understand why they're still holding the streets on the flanks too. It's just a small choke point. You know, it's Glacius holding off our Verney over there. And a uh, Tylus has thrown in his general now. So I don't know if that's a, that's a sign of, cons oh, well, oh, hold that thought. They're falling back. Raymond, thank you for the five. Mm. Uh, yep, yep, yeah, they are. Okay, so they're not going all in. Uh, they are going to fall back with a healthy number of troops. That Masa uh, Masalia still has a lot of um, troops way in the back there. But seeing Tylus' so Samnite is... warriors just landed. Oh, did they? And they're getting just annihilated by slingers and archers. Oh. We found the Gallic Hunters. There's that <laughs> archery. Yeah, there they are. I think one thing that is going to hurt the defenders right now is honestly lack of elites. Galatia mm. has no elite unit. Massilia has no elite unit. So their only elites come from Tylus. And with the attackers, all three of them can bring elites. You have our, you have two different factions that can bring Oathsworn and one faction that can bring the Royal Peltis. So that that's going to be interesting how that plays out because even though the mid-tier infantry for the defenders is better. The question is going to be, can they take down the elites? Yeah, so, you know, Galatia, what makes them so good, like you were saying, they don't have, I mean, they've got the uh, the Galatian, what is it, the Galatian legionaries? The Galatian legionary. Yeah. yeah, they're good, but they're not, like, god tier. Uh, but they rely on numbers. Scorpion. Uh, He's moving along the wall here. Uh, arverney has got his his calf right there. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, that's that's painful. He needs to run that crew away or something. Why have the scorpion up there? I don't. Probably I mean, should have. I think the scor scorpion has 15 kills. That's it. That's a waste of money. He's not getting it out of there. He's, he's not getting he's it out. He's trying to save it. It's just too slow, and I don't understand yeah. why the scorpion should have been one of the first units to fall back. I agree. I completely agree with that. 
I, I love the idea of the scorpion. There's a lot of really nice places to use it in the city. Mm -hmm. um, but he needed to get it out of there. I, and I think he's going to now, but he's going to, he might sacrifice a unit to do so. Yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, at least he's getting it out. That pullout game, though. Yeah. <laughs> a little too late. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying about Glacia, they kind of rely on numbers. You know, you can, sure, you don't have a lot of elites, but you have a lot of middle ground, you know, uh, or middle tier that you can bring to the table. But if you're going to bring a lot of troops, you got to, like, chip away. You know, like, you got to, you're going to take some heavy losses, but you're chipping away at their elites. But so far, I don't think they've done enough chipping away. Feel like the, I agree. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying to interrupt you. I'm just oh no no! It's it's this <laughs> it's the Steam thing and yeah no no. Uh, but you can disagree with me. All right, that's fine. What? I I, I just want a moment where I say something. You're like I wholeheartedly disagree. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I, but you know you've been like you're completely right. You know, um, their infantry, their material infantry is very good, very good. The Glacian Legionaries are just disgusting. Mm -hmm. Got the uh, heavy horse from Arverni moving around. Oh, yeah, I see that. I don't like that spot where they stopped at. I... There's a lot of angles to it, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of places you have to defend now. Yeah, usually you see players go a little bit further back in that little, like, stair area near the temple. Um, cause it's, there's three choke points over there. Over here, there's one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five ish, you know, somewhere around there. It's a lot. And Galatius. I can even see something, uh, in the middle where the Massilian Celtic warriors are. Like even that's a, a solid spot to, to like start a defense. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But Bowie, I. Slingers have a really nice angle. Oh, oh yeah, it's just pushing in, man. Yeah, like where it's almost like where are they getting these troops? Because all I've seen is Bowie. I fight through the center. They keep going at it. Glacia's like almost out of infantry. Like I think that's all of his infantry mm -hmm. engaged right there. Yeah, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. No, that's, that's a little rough. Defenders are getting very low here. Tylus is also running out of infantry. Their their general was in combat not too long ago. They have 83 kills. Those old sworn. And now we got a little bit of a cab battle here. Galatia sending in their general. This is risky. Oof. Oh, and the or, or the Peltus fire from the Royal Peltus. Oh. Yep. Oh, I would fire everything I could over here, even if I killed my own cav, you know, take out that general. Absolutely. No, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And they've got a lot of firepower there. You got the Gallic Hunters, you got the Cretan Archers. Yeah. Like, you got a ton of stuff that you can throw into that general. <laughs> Pocket, thank you for the three, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I just don't understand, like, what was the point of charging in your general there? Like, what were you going for? Yeah, I'm not sure, man. Uh, like, I, I understand going for the heavy horse, but the infantry was right there, ready to support it. Yeah. And, and Cav is only scary if you're not paying attention, you know? If you have all yep. of your corners protected, Cav, you know, Cav has a tough time breaking through. And now, Massilia is sending up some Celtic warriors. It's like they they don't want to give up this little uh, morale booster point over here. Right, right. I mean, it could be that they're just trying to keep them bottlenecked right there. That might be, you know, like maybe they decided to go for the sacrifice or the possible sacrifice of the gen just to keep those units in that tight little area. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's just they don't want to give up too much ground and. I mean, now it's really, honestly, down to Massilia to win this one. Yeah. And look... And I, I don't think that's the faction we want to be down to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Massilia, I mean, I've seen them a lot in the tournament, and the reason you're seeing these like mid-tier factions is because of the banning and picking phase that, which I love. You know, it makes it way more interesting. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I honestly, I would have kept Tylus for the end. You know, I I think I agree with that. Yeah. I was really happy that we made that adjustment on the band picking. I, I just think that the ability to, you know, you have that ability to kind of like strategize on who you want in the battle and who you don't want in the battle. Yeah. And I really liked that that aspect of, you know, adding a little more of a little like, it allows these like kind of more obscure, less seen factions. Oh, hey, Massilian and Cavs moving in the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's it? They Is might he just gonna. I'm gonna kill that damn artillery. It's a moral victory, as I like to call it. <laughs> it helps you in no way, but at least you get to kill those those jerks who killed 233 <laughs> of your men. Oh no, no, he held. So instead, he's just gonna have a conversation with them. <laughs> like, hey, we hate you. Good shooting, but we hate you. Yeah. <laughs> But, I, I kind of respect the defenders here for not just like, well, shit, I guess we're going to go all the way to the back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I definitely have respect for players that aren't willing to just give up and fall back. I have a friend, whenever I play Rome 2 with, I'm like, hey, man, like we should probably fall back. And it's just the classic, never! You know, like, no fun. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you crazy, crazy bastard. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely was talking to you, Disclaimable from uh, Disclaimable's Galatia, uh, the Galatian player, and he was telling me he's like, we we die or we stand where we spawn, we don't fall back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's no falling. Look at back. the flank by the Osworn. Uh, uh, Tylus is Osworn flanking around by Epirus here. Oh wait wait wait. I mean, uh, oh there it is. Wow, look at that, going after the Royal Peltis. Uh huh. That's risky. Although. Now look at Arverni's gen. Oh yeah, I saw. Arver oh, I think he was. I think he was thinking. Yeah, he's gonna go in and counter flank it if he can. Yeah. Also, Glacius generals getting involved here. This is. Uh, yeah, we got a, a interesting a, four now. generals ready to kill each other right here. <laughs> it's crazy. Come and fight me, never. Yeah, the issue though with that flank with the Osworn is he's kind of stuck there now. You know, yeah, it's, he's stuck. He's yeah. stuck. It's a suicide mission. I think Tylus is okay with that because it looks like Tylus is only down to some Thracian mm -hmm. Peltis and Slingers, so it's not I'm, a big deal. I'm kind of surprised Arverni is letting the Osworn get flanked by the Archer unit. Or, like, or, or not Arverni, Galatia. Galatia's general is right there. It just oh, let yeah, this yeah. archer come off the walls and flank the general. Well, I think the arrow tower is giving him a tough time. And he oh, yeah, he yeah, you're right. Doesn't want to lose his general yet because maybe he still has a good force that could, you know, still hold a little bit. And the loss of a general would break the, the morale. But there he goes. He's committing now. That uh, Osworn gen is um, 192 kills. Oh, yeah, he's doing very well. They're nasty. These Thorax swords are just holding back this, like, flood. I mean, it's not a flood anymore, but, uh, you know, they still have the Chosen Sword sitting there. Yeah. Kind of a little bit of a lull here. Like, I guess the, I think the attackers are like, okay, we're going to focus in one place now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a, I think it's getting a little... The, you're finding more opportunities for the calf play because the infantry's starting to die off. There's more flanks open. So I think they're kind of taking a little slow here, making sure they don't, you know, leave a flank open and calf come around and kill them. But the Oathsworn are now uh, surrounded. Calf is in, in the city now. The Massilian calf. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, it's next to the gate now. There it is. I think he's going to sneak past the uh, Chosen Sword. Because he got real skinny right oh, there. Oh, no. Now he's just getting javied. He's getting shot by the arrow towers, too. That's painful. Yeah. Very you, painful. You got to keep moving. Yeah, I think he, he must have been microwing or something. But, yeah, probably. Oh, God. <laughs> Bowie, oh, I, no. Bowie Eye looks like he's about to commit his general. Another unit of Oathsworn. Uh, 
Oh, there they go. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, the cab. The oh, cab. Right yeah, sorry, yep. right side. I need to tell you. I no, wish we good. could, like, <laughs> I wish I could see, like, your camera in the sky or something where I know where you <laughs> right. are. But, yeah, he charges yeah. Cav. With the Cav. Or he charges he's Archers. Got, got in the Archers here. Mm -hmm. 82 kills already on him. What's up? Too they're bad. just getting annihilated. I think he could have gotten a lot more out of this Cav, but at least they got yeah. something. Yeah, that, there's nothing worse than, like, I'm going to bring Cav just in case I need Cav, and then your Cav does nothing. Yeah. It hurts because you're like, man, I just wasted money on that thing that did nothing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And not only did he lose that Cav, it also gives the attackers peace of mind. It's like, there's, that Cav's gone. We don't have to worry about it anymore. So that's another reason why to just hang on to that cab. Uh, hey, by the way, the uh, I guess from the attacker's point of view, left flank, uh, they are pushing up. The attackers are pushing up. Oof, yep. The uh, Galatian gen and, or yeah, our Verni gen, sorry, our Verni and Epirus gen and all that. Right. Uh, the bounce of power. are trying to make it back. Yeah, they are. The bounce of power is not looking great. Uh, it's looking like. The only way for the defenders to win this one is for the scorpion they have fallen back to just go machine gun mode and <laughs> kill, you know, half of the what's left of the uh, forces. Uh, the Bowie Eye General still taking on uh, the Celtic Warriors. So. The center is being cleaned Big up. Fall back. Yep, yep. This is the last desperate last stand, and uh, most likely this will be a Rising Kings victory. But uh, Fat Lady isn't singing yet, so I don't want to. I don't want to assume anything here. Let's see what are they, what are yeah, they? Yeah, I just I just don't think the defenders have much left. It's all it's pretty much all Massilia here. Yep, and like we were saying, the lack of elites. I mean. If you're going to try to come back at the very end of a battle, you got to have, like, that elite unit that can hold off thousands. And I feel mm -hmm. like Massilia doesn't have that. No. You know, their their best hoplite unit is the Massilian hoplite, which is solid. But the issue with hoplites is they don't usually kill very many. Um, but their best infantry unit they have is the thorax, which is considered... I mean, it's kind of like the baseline infantry, like... It's like everything else in the game is judged off of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I think Arverni is going to push the left side while um, the other two, Epirus and um, oh, uh, yeah, I see that. Bowie, are going to push the center. They're capturing the uh, little morale points as well, which will add up. Man, what a bloody battle, though. Just a slugfest out in that for that courtyard yes sir yep definitely been fun though I, i've really enjoyed this one like just two good teams duking it out mm, you know yeah, what i mean yeah so thorax swordsman two units of thorax swordsman that's it. <laughs> is that all they have i think that's it man mm, that's like, game there's then. a couple archer units here but like i don't i don't know what else you do like Mm, that's game because their scorpion's not set up yet. Yeah, and there's really nowhere to set up the scorpion. I mean, there's not a good not angle anywhere. Good, I would say no. Mm. And they they've got a flank wide open, uh, on that back area. Mm -hmm. So I don't see them winning. So I I might just call it here. I I, I think I'm gonna put I'm gonna hit the buzzer and say uh, Rising Kings <laughs> has won this round. Um, but you yeah, never know. That's what it looks like. I mean, oh, boat. Nope, there it is right there. Oh yeah. Army losses. Yep. Yep. And the loss of the morale points. Uh, mm -hmm. so I would say Bowie, I be an MVP of this match. I think Bowie, I did a great job of spearheading the attack and slicing through the defenses. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think? Um, Carpe, uh, Venom, <laughs> if that's even right. What, what do you think they could have done a little better here to win this one? Um, I think maybe finding some a little better angles to use some of their archers, um, you know, focus, trying to focus down those elite units when they were engaged, you know, like 
if you can't beat the elite unit, I'd say just don't engage it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, expose it. Get it into a kill box or something. I think there's a couple different ways you could play that. Um, I think they maybe should have fell back a little bit sooner than they did. Mm -hmm. um, and probably a little farther than they did. You yeah. know, had they fell back a little bit more than that big plaza that they stopped at, I think that they might have been able to pull it out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I also think, honestly, by just faction selection, they kind of lost. Uh, because the the type of factions they had rely a lot on like flanking you know if, if you're gonna beat an elite unit and you have those factions that are middle like they have a lot of mid-tier units you got to rely on numbers and flanking and this map does not give you that opportunity too often <laughs> so i think it's almost as if if they just had another faction that had you know, really good hold in the line type units that could have won here, but yeah, it's just uh, it was just, nonetheless a great fight. Yeah, I think that like bringing the Massilia, Massilia, the downside to it, it needs something to to kind of back it up with some punch, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think that's where they they really missed those elites. They had the the uh, Osworn from or from uh, Tylus, but that was it. So now Massilia is kind of exposed in the fact that it just doesn't have that killing power. Yeah. I was actually really surprised to see Epirus here with the most kills. Yeah, yeah. Um, where did it come from? Uh, oh, the Royal Pelt. This one getting 350 mm -hmm. kills. Um, and the Archer's doing pretty good. And, the, of course, the Ballista. 234 nobody's upset with 234 kills no no not a you know what i mean especially like the fixed ballista is only 700 something gold so it's really not that much of a like financial no yeah for like sure. thing you know yeah 700 gold and you killed 234 yeah definitely worth it um and then over on the defending side uh tylus no surprise there, getting the most kills those tribal warriors i mean look at them Almost all of them have over 100 kills. Some of them very close to 200 kills. Yeah, this very, very nicely done. That 285 on the Osworn, really well done there. And then, I mean, you could just see the, the tribals just really tearing it up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide my screen here so they can't see all the replays. <laughs> uh I name all my replays like ridiculous things, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right. All right, let me get mine. So I'm loading it up. There we go. Got it. Arverni and Bowie Eye again, but look wow. at that. Wow. Iceni as well. Wow. A lot of the. Wow. Iceni. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Very interesting. Pick. Very, very interesting. interesting. Pick. Uh. A lot of similar factions. Uh, so we have the Arverni, the Bowiei, Galatia, Massilia, uh, but the two new ones being Egypt and Iceni. This is a 70 minute battle. Real time, real time. Oh, wow. Must have had some lag in it. The, I think that is that showing uh, the deployment? Is that deployment time? I think it shows you like what the actual like play time was, including like, you know, if it was really laggy or something. I'm oh. pretty sure it shows that. Yeah, I always thought it was wow. like deployment time or something. I mean, it could be. I could be totally wrong on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm at 60.01. Okay, I'm still loading in. It's kind of... Gosh. You and your like fancy supercomputer. I know. Aren't even in yet. I know. Oh, that was loud. Yeah, did you hear that? <laughs> I need to get a new mic arm or something, or oil it up. It's like the oh, tin, <laughs> the Tin Man from uh, <laughs> of Wizard of Oz. Like, oh yo. <laughs> All right. Uh, I did not hit pause right away. I'm fifty nine fifty. All right, fifty nine fifty. Mhm. Mm so we got a long one. Dude. 
This must come down to the wire. Yep, sure sounds like it, or looks like it, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, looks like pretty much this, like a very similar setup in like where they're attacking. Mm -hmm. It's just like they shifted the other direction. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you're just now joining the stream, uh, we have the Rising Kings taking on Carpe Venom. Venom, Venom. Uh, the Rising Kings are now defending. Uh, they in the last battle they were attacking they won so if the rising kings win this match they will be moving on to the finale to take on devils in the night uh, so very exciting times all right um yeah uh i guess the surprise faction here being iceni but honestly iceni on defense is pretty good i would say yeah i could see it I can see it, like getting the Brit like the slingers have some good angles here. This yeah. is a good settlement for slinger fire. Yeah. Um, so that is one bonus. Yeah, the Iceni just are terrible at attacking because they don't have archers, they have only slingers, which are good once you're in the city, but uh, you know, it's just archers kinda are better at shooting over walls. And of course they I don't think they can bring tortoises either, so that's why they tend to be more of a defensive mm -hmm. faction. Yeah, so this uh, this is going to be interesting. The attackers have no tortoises. Really? None. Wow. <laughs> so uh, that could be very interesting, um, just because of you know no tortoises is you know makes it very difficult, very difficult. Yeah. Well, you want to go ahead and get this marathon match started? Yeah, I'm All ready right. when you are. On one, three, two, one. You're at fifty nine fifty, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. 50, uh, 47, 46, 45, 44. Yeah, Perfect. I think I'm like <laughs> one second ahead of you, but that's fine. Uh, oh gosh, yeah, I know. I know. I'm just, I am just that's, not. This whole day has just been technical difficulties. <laughs> I know. I was late to the stream, and then I had technical difficulties. It's a crime. You know what? That Hibachi Grill was calling your name, okay? Yes. <laughs> In case you didn't know, I was late because I was picking up some food and... I had to have some Chinese food. Or, uh... It was Chinese. Japanese. Japanese, my bad, yeah. Wow. Well, well <laughs> I know, I'm the worst. Japanese food. <laughs> uh, so, just a big b bombardment right now. Um, yeah. Nothing... Nothing too say, crazy. I will say, it's kind of cool seeing the all the fireballs, but also seeing the little scorpion bolts all go flying at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of it, cool to watch. It's epic kind of looking, you know? Like, it looks like a proper siege. So, yeah, they're going to rely on their artillery just to destroy the walls. Uh, this is a shame, I would say, because tortoises could have done that for you and then used the artillery to kill the infantry inside. Um, yeah. But I guess none of these factions have tortoises. Nope. So... Ooh, ooh. I mean, the one that always surprises me is the fact that Athens, or I mean, uh, Egypt doesn't. Yeah, I don't know why. Ooh, they got a couple shots ricocheting off and landing enemy infantry, but. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah. You see, uh, Iceni actually has some cab hidden over on inside the city on the left, so that'll be interesting to see if they do anything with ooh. it. Ooh. From their point of view left or attacker's point of view left? Uh, where's the cav? <laughs> Long bombardment. Uh, left side, Iceni, all the way over by Arverni. Uh, attacker's it's point of view or defenders? City. Defender, defender. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he's on the far, far left. Right up against the wall here. There's a bunch of uh, Celtic warriors from Arverni. Oh, right there it is. It. Okay, I see it, yeah. yeah. I don't know why. To see if they do anything with it. I don't know why, but I was expecting them to be under trees or something. So. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah uh, another hopefully. scorpion. Look at that. I seen he also brought a scorpion, so Very that's nice. twice we've seen scorpions from defenders. Very interesting. And uh, I also see siege towers pushed up over there. I assume they were doing the same strategy. I think they were trying to, yeah. Yeah. Um. Doesn't look like they got 
I guess they must have gotten uh, Bowie eyes. Honestly, I don't. I only see one artillery on the walls. So did somebody else bring a ground arty? Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention this, guys. But if you look in the description, I have a link to the Carpe uh, Vini Vinium Vinium. <laughs> I have, you know, to seize the wine, uh, I have a link to their Discord. They're trying to build up a little bit of a Rome 2 community, and they want to help out new players into the game. So if you guys want to check that out, look in the description. Carpe. Yeah, Benham. they're good players. They're, they're definitely yeah. good players. Yeah. All right. So. Our, our first match against them was very, very, very close. Very fun. Yeah, this, it sounds like there's been a lot of great new players um, that were actually inspired by the last tournament. Like, that's how new they are, you know? They haven't even been playing for like a year, and they're just, they're in it to win it. So, props Yeah, I to love them. it. I love seeing that. Yeah. So it's always nice seeing, like, fresh faces come in. You know, it, it keeps things mixed up and kind of changing things around. Yeah. This is a long bombardment phase, man. Yeah. This, this game is so long. Yeah, <laughs> they have not. And that's one thing to consider. The time is against you as the attackers. And I feel like they're wasting too much time. It's been, what, about five minutes? Uh, Yeah, I mean, yep, it's right around five minutes of just this bombardment phase. Not, it's not too bad. I've seen worse where players wait like 20 minutes to finally attack. Uh, but... Yeah, they're moving up. And by the time they actually get to the walls, it'll probably be closer to like seven minutes. So it's not terrible. So they're moving up two Galatian swords uh, towards those uh, arrow or siege towers. I wonder if they're going to get on them and, and kind of push and attack the walls. Well, now one's breaking off there. God. I always hate that about recording, like, for a battle I haven't watched. I'm just like, and look, I think they're going to... Uh, never mind. Never it's mind. Because yeah. they're not. <laughs> yeah. Or what you could do. Uh, most of the time I watch battles for the first time. Just to have a natural reaction to it. Sometimes, though, you'll see a battle. And then you're like, all right. I'm going to make myself look smart. I'm going to watch this. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, you know what I think they're going to do? I think they're going to do this. And because I've already seen it, it, you're yeah. like, oh my god. See, I knew it. I knew it. I just, you know, I'm such a pro. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've never seen so much of a wall destroyed in Rome 2. No, Look at that. dude. Like, I've never seen it. Usually you see it with a bunch of tortoises, and this is just. It's weird. Did they build that wall? I don't think they did. <laughs> yeah. Uh all right, so Egypt is attacking the gate right now with the siege towers and a ram. Still nothing yep. yet. They're they're starting to push up now. Yep. Looks like Egypt brought two Cretans and two Nubians. Oh wait, no, it is three Cretans. Okay, I thought it was two Cretans and two Nubians, and I was like, really? I want like why? Hmm. Yeah. I I covered a battle the other day, and one of the guys was uh salute and, and brought four persian light archers and i was like what <laughs> really yeah yeah like, i mean hey it, oh hey. It is. oh hey they're gonna sally out yep. on, the, on the ramp yep going after the egyptian infantry smart yeah when it comes yep. to the archers and siege battles you usually want to bring the best that you can thought that Egypt was going to go help help that Egyptian infantry, but they're just going to let them die to the Celtic warriors, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, I think they fine. should just disengage. Yeah. There they go. Look at the chasing them. There you go. The chasing them, you now can you take get advantage a really good of that. Flank on him. Mm -hmm. He's about to get one of his towers dropped. Yep. So, I don't know if you know it, but if you engage the unit that's carrying the tower, they'll get off it will of it. instantly cause the unit to get off of it. Yeah, yeah. And it's super annoying. Yep. Well, it's smart of him to do that. Mm-hmm. 
I've done it with Cav. I'll take Cav and I'll I'll go like if I see like four siege towers in a row, I'll just go and I'll charge one, then I'll charge the next one, then I'll charge the next one, yeah. and make all of them get off the towers. Yeah, yeah, it's smart. It just slows them down. Mm -hmm. uh, Massilia. Especially they've already wasted so much time. Yeah, uh, for sure. Massilia has a bunch of troops lined up. Celtic warriors. Uh, Galatia has pushed in some troops. Uh, in that breach there. So things are starting to get spicy. Raymond, thank you for the two. This battle for the wall is going to be lit. Yeah, it's going to be intense. Ooh, the uh, slingers for Brit the Britain slingers for Mycenae on the right side of the defenders getting shot from the, the side angle of Egypt there. Ooh, yeah. Nice angle there from Egypt. That's huge. Uh, killing archers early on like that is huge. He's going to go ahead and hug the wall here, mm -hmm. which will protect him, but he lost <laughs> half shit, of his unit. Shit. Yeah. Hide. Sometimes oh, they're still get, even the way they are, man. Yeah, they're still getting torn up. They're down to 56. They're breaking now, too. That is not a good sight for the defenders. I'm trying to think. Oh, never mind. I'm kind of interested. Arver okay, Arverni's. Never mind. I say I was interested in Arverni where he put his ballista on the far left of the defenders, but uh, apparently Massilia snuck up with his Gallic Hunters and burned it. Oh, really? So Arverni's already lost his, his artillery. Really? Unshot. Oh, over here. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, the attacker's doing pretty well here. Um, which, again, the attackers being Carpe uh, Venom. Uh, they need a victory here to stay in the tournament. So this has got to be clutch. Michael, thank you for the two euros. I appreciate it. Lots of archer fire coming down, too. <laughs> it's funny. I, so I didn't have Bush to talk on, but I was saying the same thing to the stream right as you said that. <laughs> This is all it is pro pro streaming, guys. Pro. Pro, yeah. <laughs> pro streaming. I will say, as an attacker, what I like about this position is the archer position. So the cool, the nice thing about mm, the way this yeah. kind of thrusts out away from the rest of the wall, you can set up archers on either side of this wall, mm -hmm. and regardless of which way the defenders defend against you, you can shoot into the back of the other side. Yeah, and, and that's why I mentioned, too, uh, in the last uh, matchup, the last battle, that this is one of the situations where not holding the wall is okay. Because, uh, yeah, if the attackers take these walls, or even if they're behind the walls firing over them, they're going to have an angle on you, no matter where, like you said, no matter where you defend, they'll have an angle on you. Do we have a fallback? Uh, I think we do. I think they're falling back. Like, uh, really far. They are I'm giving intrigued. up the, uh, the, uh, bulb area. <laughs> oh, and here comes some the artillery. <laughs> Ooh, nice. That nice. Good. That's a perfect time to use it. Yeah. Good he kind of has to, because if you think about it, he still has ammo. He's about to lose his artillery, because if they fall back out of the range, now you can't shoot anything anymore. There we go. Lots of artillery coming in. I'm actually surprised they still have oh. ammo. I am too, with how much of the walls they yeah. destroyed. But yeah, they are falling back. Egypt is pursuing them like a heat-seeking missile. And there they go. They're going to hit yeah. the sword followers. But those sword followers are a little uh, hesitant there. And yeah. There we go. Oh, but now you got backup from the Chosen Sword. Oh, man, look at that. That far back middle hit of Iceni. Oh, that, yeah. They got to be careful. Honestly, it looks like they're going to hold the same plaza Richard, as thank what, you the, for the five. Defender, what the other team last game. Michael, thank you for the five. You know what I mean? They're holding that big plaza again. Yeah. Same way that the other team did. Yeah, yeah. They just did it much sooner. You know, they did it. They mm -hmm. barely put up a fight in this outer area. Barely put up a fight. I think I think the big reason for that was the artillery. I think that, that artillery had such a good angle on what they've got there 
that they basically said, hey, we have to get out of this area if we're not going to die. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you're being stared down by three artillery pieces. I mean, but I would assume they're out of ammo. I can't believe they sell ammo. True. That is true. I, I would be so mad right now. I'd be like, how the hell do they have ammo? <laughs> Look how many walls they destroyed. They got to be low. There's nothing worse. Yeah. There's nothing worse than when you're getting destroyed by, like, archers or or artillery, and you're just getting annihilated. You're like, how? Like, you've been firing all day. Yeah, yeah. How are yeah. you still doing this? If I had a dollar every time I said that. Uh, Egypt... <laughs> Egypt sent up some Galician swordsmen kind of by themselves, and now Arverni's flanking around them. Oh, yep. Yeah. Wait. They're, they're gone. Arverni. It was on the uh, left side, attacker's point of view. Uh, they cleaned them up now, but uh, it seems, oh, okay. seems kind of a waste oh, to yep, throw yep, away yep, a yep. unit like that. The two chosen sword units did it, right? Uh, the chosen, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is the complete fallback, huh? Uh, I see any moving up their cav. Artillery coming in. I wonder what you're gonna do with them. Well, um, there's no enemies over on that side yet. Or no attackers. Mm. Honestly, I would just send them they to the back They could just be gate. moving them back a little bit. I'd send them to the gate wonder... back there. It's not a bad spot, yeah. Back in the back and move outside. Yeah. It'd take a long time, but it'd be worth it. If you can... That Britain Slinger somehow survived. Oh my god. It's still on the walls. <laughs> like, we're still here. We'll we're... fight on. They're, I can't believe they sell artillery. I cannot believe that. There's no, they're still shooting. And this one has 139 kills. Oh, oh man. Wow. Yeah, silly, uh, 86. Yeah, yeah. I bet the defenders thought they were done. They're like, they're out of ammo. Guarantee. That's why I they're guarantee. like. Guarantee. Yeah. That's what I would think. You know, the one I'd be scared of right now? Palacia's artillery. Look yeah. at the angle that that thing has on the defense of what they've got right now. Yeah. Where Iceni is? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Galatia's artillery has got a really good... If it's got ammo, it could do a lot of damage here. There's, uh... Really, the only big push right now is in the center. Yeah, and once again, the attackers, I think, are doing the right thing and kind of... Alright. We're in. Let's settle, get everything organized, and push. You know, yeah. I see a lot of attackers, they get in, like, yeah, we're in. Go, 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 go. You yeah. Know. Yeah, I think the only time to be like that, the go, 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 is if the defenders are just so unorganized and you can cut so many off from, the, from retreat. Absolutely. But in this case, you know, the defenders were well, well organized and falling back. Yeah, and I think that's, like, I was kind of surprised that Massilia didn't have his cab a little closer to the walls for this situation. Um, because a lot of times you can sneak that cab in and mm -hmm. catch, you know, retreating archers mm -hmm. yeah. or things like that. Yeah, for sure. Now, that, is that center does not look good for the defenders at the moment. Oh, look at this. Iceni's moving out their cab through the gate. Or not Iceni. Yeah, no, Iceni. Well, when the hell did they get back over here? Uh, do they have two units? <laughs> no. I don't think so. They're, they they pulled yeah. a Houdini. I, I don't... <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> oh, but why? Because you got Massilian Cav, right? Maybe he's just going to go kill the Galatian Ballista. Yeah, Little look at moral that. victory. Galatian Ballista's got ammo. No, it's got oh, ammo. Oh, does it? It's got rocks. Yep, it's got We better rocks. shoot. Just shoot. Right fire, fire, fire. Use up that ammo quick. Massilia is going to be too late to stop it. They're trying. Oh, I see. What Galatia even... should do here? Oh is no, in. no, they're they're Why? falling back. They don't want to lose their veteran riders. I I take the artillery, man. If that RT, if that artillery's got ammo, it should die right now. 
It only has 22 like, kills. Yeah. I, yeah. And it does have ammo, I so. I don't. Maybe they're just, you know, waiting for better spots. They, they, someone paid off those veteran riders. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> How about you just walk away? Yeah. yeah? You want this it. Good, coin good. purse here? Huh? All right. So the fight in the oh, center man. is getting pretty... Pretty crazy. Bowie Eyes committing troops to the center. Uh, and then also on the right side, we had the Gla Galatians kind of pushing down the road. Looks like the Egypt's maybe going to start pushing on Arverni, possibly. It's a good matchup, too. Very good uh, very good factions, uh, Egypt and, and Arverni. Yeah. Oh, but look at the archers from Bowie Eye moving over there. They're going to take oh, yeah. that archer fight, I bet you. Yeah, they are. They're shifting over. Oh, there's more artillery coming in. Oh, they're going to have an angle in Massilia. Yeah, that's... Well... And the, uh, look, Iceni's got a great spot for a scorpion right ooh. in the back of that plaza. Egypt's focusing them down. Egypt archers have pushed back the Bowie Eye archers. Oh, man, he lost what looks like probably 20 men there, and that one just broke. Yeah. Kevin, thank you for the thousand. I'm not sure what that currency is, but I pre oh from Japan. I don't. What is the jet? What do the Japanese use? Hey, I got some Japanese uh, food today, so I'm excited about that. I'm gonna eat it after this uh, this match up here. Uh, but yeah. Uh, also, I noticed that Egypt has Sobek Coltis, which is always awesome to see. Yeah, love them. Get some fear on some of these guys. Yeah. I mean, you got to feel bad for Meter. the uh, crocodiles, but <laughs> it is what it there, is. There's, there's a lot of them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. At this time, I'm sure. I'm sure they're like rats. They're like, dang it, you know, I was out chilling at the, the, the Nile River and this freaking crocodile came out of nowhere. And, yeah. Yen, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean... Right now, I, I don't. It, it's right now. It's so even. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right now, it's really hard to to call who's got an edge. I think that the defenders made a really good move at falling back to where they did. You know, mm -hmm. you're giving up ground that's kind of useless. You know, at that that point, you know that ground is no longer useful. So why defend it? Yeah. No. I mean, that's smart, and it, it's not. Thankfully for them, this isn't Attila. You know, it, the attackers can't burn down these buildings and affect the morale, <laughs> you know. So giving up ground is not always bad in Rome 2. And I think they made the right call so, here. Somebody in the chat uh, about the Sobek cult has said, Swamp People, the unit. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, so, the show Swamp, yeah, Swamp People. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you those for are, the two. Those I appreciate are alligators, it. not crocodiles, okay? Yeah, there's a difference, all right? <laughs> so. Oh, uh, um, Britain Slingers just got shattered in the center there. Really? I'm not really sure why they were moving up. Like, one unit, and there's three Syrian archers from Galatia sitting right there. I think that was kind of a waste of a, of a Slinger unit right there. Only 15 kills. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's honestly where I would say the attackers have the edge. I think they're dominating the battlefield in terms of skirmish superiority. You know, they every time there's skirmishing going on, it looks like the attackers are winning. Yeah. I mean, you're talking, what, 10 archers for the attackers? You got four from Egypt, three from... Galatia and three from um, Massilia. So, talking 10 archers, and then for the defenders, you got four for Arverni, four Celtic bows, so they're not the greatest archer. Right. And then slingers. So, mm -hmm. you're definitely outmatched in the archer category. Yeah. Well, not only, yeah, not only, only with skill, but also, you know, the Britain has lost, or the Iceni have lost one slinger unit so far i think and they have another one here that's down to half strength so it's just um yeah it seems like they're losing the skirmish battle yeah and i think the defenders are so somebody asked like why not fall all the way back to the keep at this point 
And my thoughts on it is it's because of the archer, mm -hmm. the attackers having the archer superiority. Because even though that that keep is defender, like is really defensive, it's extremely exposed to archer fire. Mm -hmm. The the attackers can set up archers all over the place to hit it, and so the archer they they would lose it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no, I agree completely with that because that's why I usually never go back to the final stand with my entire army because you're a sitting duck. You know, you're just asking to get volleyed upon and there's nowhere to go. You're all, you know, grouped up in this tiny area. Archers are going to rain hell on you and it's it's going to be tough. And yeah, I, I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the attackers to exhaust their archer ammo so when they do fall back to the final stand, uh, the archers aren't going to be as much of a problem. Yeah, I agree with that. I completely agree there. Also, also you've got the the, the small victory points uh, that affects morale. You know, those do add up. Yep. You don't get those up. Like at the area that they're at, there's none that they've lost. So they're once again they're not like. They're not losing ground that's important right now because in the in reality it's not it's not yeah. doing anything it's not affecting you know? them yeah right yeah it's like why defend something that is no longer beneficial right you know and yeah. like you know i i once again i appreciate that once again they did not just like yeah we're just gonna go all the way back to the point now yeah you know, they said we're going to defend here because it is a still a beneficial spot but it's not super cheesy <laughs> well, I mean, it's not good to fall back like that, you know, why every time we play, we show battles with really good players. How many times do they fall back all the way to the last stand with their full army? Almost never. Almost never. Yeah, it's because it's bad. You, you shouldn't do it. Uh, there's a lot of kill potential out here. Uh, you know, you, you want to try to because sieges are always a battle of attrition. And you never want the attackers with fresh troops, full ammo, pushing on the last stand. You know, it's just not good. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right about that. You know, and also, like, could you imagine trying to cram all three of these armies into that yeah. area there by the point? It'd be a nightmare. It'd be a nightmare. People lobbed on top of each other. Yeah. <laughs> you, and your cav can do, do nothing. You know, there's nowhere for the cav to go. Um, the archers are going to have to fight for space up here to fire. It's just, it would be a, mm -hmm. a disaster. Yeah. And, um, you know, that goes all the way back to medieval two days where I would so many times, especially in medieval two, you had those fortresses that were multi-layered. People would just go all the way to the back, you know, and just sit there. It's like, what's the point of having multiple layers? If you're not going to defend it, you might as well just have one layer and just hold that uh and uh, <laughs> right yeah so so yeah it's it's so important i think that's just a new player mistake they just feel safer and they're like oh i, I have less i like, have to just manage gonna defend two spots yeah huh. yeah it's like oh what's that enemy archers getting on the walls and firing down on us oh boy well damn <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, but here comes got some egyptian stuff pushing left yeah egyptians are pushing against the arverni and our Vernie's kind of, you know, out here by himself on this flank, trying to hold it. He's got a, it's a, actually a really good position. I mean, it's two points he has to worry about. He's got a, yeah. he's got an arrow tower supporting him as well. It's actually a really good spot. Okay. I was wondering, like, I was looking, I didn't see any Galatian Royal Guard for Egypt, but now I see it back by the gate here. Because I was about to be like, man, like, they didn't bring Galatian Royal Guard. They're going to have a rough day here. Yeah. Yeah, they got him. Thank goodness. Is that a time? There's a little gap in the defense in the center. You see that? Uh, On the right side. Right in, oh yes, yes it is. Yeah. Uh, by the missile or the thorax sword. Yeah, I'm surprised. I yep. love those opportunities because I'll form a thin column and march through it. Uh, but maybe the attackers just didn't see that. We call it greasing through. Yeah. <laughs> greasing through. Yeah, pour some grease on yourself and whoop. Some lube. <laughs> 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 
You got it. You right. know the type. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we got more troops charging in to reinforce um, from Iceni and Bowie Eye. Kevin, thank you for being a man of arms. I appreciate it, uh, man. Archers from, our, from Egypt are now set up over here, starting to shoot into the Celtic bows from Bowie Eye. Um, our Verney might be able to start getting a shot on them, but it's going to be a tough angle. Yeah, those, Cre those Cretan oh, archers are nasty. Yeah, they're very, very good. You know, they got that 40 missile damage, which is, whew. Yeah, yeah, it's going to hurt. Uh, but they are getting shot at. They are getting hit pretty hard. Yeah, that's kind of the downside of the Cretans is their armor isn't quite as good as something like Assyrian. Yeah, you know, Assyrians have 40 armor. The Cretans only have the 30, so you kind of lose a little bit there. But then the Cretans get the increased damage, so it's kind of a give or take type deal. Yeah, situation. One of my favorite archers is actually the Chimerian heavy archers, because mm. um, they get the armor of the Syrians, but they get the damage of the Cretans, and so it's they're just disgusting. Yeah, yeah. They're very good. Nice little push here in the center by uh, Massilia. You know, Massilia and Egypt pushing in that center, and there's not much of Bowie I stand in there to stop them. Well, they keep sending in more and more reinforcements. Again, the Rising Kings, I keep seeing this, but I feel like they're sending in more than they should. Uh, and this would be a good opportunity for archers to kind of fire in the back of that blob. And also you got, you got what are these, Thorax Swordsmen using their javis? Chewing up the flank yep, there? Yep. That's huge. That's giving them a lot of kills. They're at 35 kills. You know, this is yeah. This is what we were talking about in the first in the first battle where Bowie I had thrown four units into a combat where you really only needed two. Yeah. The Massilians are not doing that. You know, they've got the units in combat, but they put the extra units behind it so that, you know, you're not tiring yourself out. So nicely right. done there by Massilia. And with the Javi support, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Both those units. Look at this. Those two reserve units. Uh, 59 kills and 38 kills. And barely have seen any Oof. close combat. So that's, that's how hey, you wreck The one with 60 kills. kills only has 12 lost. So, like, you got to think probably half of those kills are from those Javis, like you said. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, that's, that's really good. Yeah. That's one and thing. And honestly, Javis are the perfect thing for Bo for to use against Bowie Eye. Your Javis are your armor piercing. So mm -hmm. Bowie has got that 75 armor. Those Javis just eat through it, you mm -hmm. know. And that's, I mean, that Javi management will defy. Well, basically, you'll it'll make you a good player to an amazing player. If you're really good with your Javis, it's like having an extra, you know, extra unit with you. When you throw those Javis from a distance and you kill a ton of them, it's, you know, you rack up some major kills. Egypt still pushing against Arverni. Good push. It's a good push. Arverni does not have much here. It's it's looking pretty good for the attackers. Um, they still have a lot of yeah, units. I like this push. Yeah. Um, they're a little slow, a little hesitant on the on the right flank uh, against the Iceni over there. Yeah. But they, they see that Egypt is making the the blob mistake again, right on that wall by Arverni's gen. Yeah, yeah, that third He's unit. He's got the Galatian Royal Guard that can't get in. There's just no use. You know what he should have done? Just send a unit up on the wall. He's got a unit on the wall as we yeah, speak. Yeah. Just send him down. He can flank send behind the general. Wall, yeah, absolutely. Maybe he was going to do that. And he's microing elsewhere. He just kind of forgot to move him. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could see, like, I seen he might put a unit there, right? To, like, you know, see the if he sees it moving, he might put a unit there. But even then, now you've committed a unit away from your, fine, your, your actual push. So even that is beneficial you know yeah. yeah one thing that i like to do that i that i notice a lot of people don't do very well is i like to cycle my unit so 
I'll send in something cheap, like a Galatian sword, and I will go engage the enemy with the Galatian sword, right? Mm -hmm. But right behind that Galatian sword, I'll have something like a Thorax or a Galatian Royal Guard, something of the sort, coming up behind it. And after that Galatian sword has engaged, I will actually, at the same time, I'll pull out, so I'll click the Galatian sword out of combat, Mm -hmm. while at the same time charging the Galatian Royal Guard into combat. Um, because it allows the cheaper unit to soak up the ammo of the enemy, the but it also prevents, a, yes, and it also allows your, your tougher unit to actually get a clean charge on the enemy. Right. And it's something, and then not only that, it keeps your troops fresh. You know, mm -hmm. cycling those units out like that will keep your troops a little fresher than they would have been. Yeah, that's one thing I wish Rome 2 had better mechanics for, is the cycling of troops in and out. You know? Especially with the Romans, because that was, like, their specialty. You know? That's how they kept their front Absolutely, lines fresh. Absolutely, yeah. So you got to get creative no, with it. Yeah. Like, I will say, like, historically, it's a little unrealistic that every single, you know, like, so many units have jabbies and stuff like that. Yeah. But in this game, jabbies are god. Like, yeah. units that don't have jabbies in this game are so underpowered. Yes. Yo. Yeah. It's almost like they're naked. You know, it's just like they just, you got to be really careful with them because you go toe to toe with another infantry that has jabbies where they're going to throw a couple volleys into you. Now, look, now you're down by like 20% of what you had, you know? Right. Yeah. It's, it's just interesting, um, you know, because there's a lot of units in the game that would be a lot better if they just had javelins, you know? Um, but yeah, you know, if you have two evenly matched units charging into each other and one has javies and one doesn't, if the one that has javies gets his javy toss, they will win, you know, mm -hmm. at, le at least in a 1v1 without support, you know, because you're talking, you know, an immediately, you know, an immediate like 10 kills just from that javy toss. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it, it, over on the Arverni side in Egypt, they're, speaking of cycling, they actually did some cycling. Arverni did some cycling. They had their general in the fight, cycled them out, and put in some chosen swordsmen. So he's doing everything he can to tire out the Egyptians and hold them back. Yeah, good switch there. Good yeah. switch. Yeah. You know, the gen was down to 106 man, 106 man, 106 men. And so I think that was a good idea to get him out of that combat. Yeah. Got 106, or yeah, I mean, 106 men and 106 kills, so he is even. <laughs> <laughs> One kill for every man. And uh, our Verney is actually pushing around the flank. You see this? They're going down the road. Bowie Eye's helping him out. Egypt now is kind of on the defense. Uh, they got to watch out for the uh, the flanking maneuver there. Guys pulling back. I wonder if maybe the archer fire. Yeah, I think the Pushed archer back, scared maybe. him off. Yeah. It's a good push, though. Like, that's a very, very small unit of Thorax yeah. sword stopping him. Yeah. Oh, Get there's him. the Sobex. Oh, are they going in? Uh, oh, I think they're just going trying, trying to, scare to break him. this unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, Arverni, like, has a perfect opportunity to come and annihilate those uh, Sobex with his archers. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, Bowie Eye's going to do it. Oh, I see it. I see it. Uh, yep. There they go. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's nothing better than watching just a mass uh, volley of arrows coming in on the unit yep. and just watching them drop. Yeah. They're dodging it. Look at they're, they're They're trying to dodge the arrows a little bit. Just imagine, like, ooh, wah, hee, ha, ooh, yeah. wah, ha. Get Duck, me. Dive. Dodge. Duck? I think. Duck. I don't know. Dodge. Duck. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. I think it's dodge, dive, duck, something, dodge. He says dodge twice. <laughs> well, this is like half, half Rome 2 and half uh, movie quotes. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but they keep the Sobex think, alive, and the archers are now... Yeah. In fact, well, the Egypt's kind of falling back. Arverni's not going to pursue him, though. 
And again, Egypt throwing in three units there against Arverni on that wall flank. I think he's just trying to put like a mass into that, you know, use the mass to kind of get into there. But I would just keep one of these units. I'd let the Galatian Royal Guard just do their work, you know. Mm. Now they got their head hunt on, but like once again, their Galatian Royal Guard is only half in combat, so the head hunt is only going to be partially effective. Right. Vasilia still pushing hard in the center. More and more troops keep coming in. Defenders not willing to give up the spot. And Iceni still over on their side. That would be the right flank from the attacker's point of view. Still nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just sitting here pretty. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do our nails. <laughs> yeah, I mean, might as well. <laughs> I mean, it's a good spot. You know, that's where I would want to be. Just sitting there doing nothing. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it, it's hard to tell, but it seems like the defenders are starting to run out of troops. Seems like rising kings are running out of troops. And by the way, if you're just now joining the stream, this is the second matchup between rising, uh, rising kings and, uh, Car Carpe Venom, Venom. Uh, so, um, in the first matchup, Rising Kings took the victory as the attackers. Now, if the Rising Kings win this one as the defenders, they'll be moving on to the finale to take on Devils in the Dark. Or Devils oh, in the Night. Dude, Devils in the at, Night. Look at Iceni Scorpion. It's in the center plaza. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, oh. 191 kills. Whoa. All right, we're, and yeah, we get to see a lot of scorpions because it's the artillery you're allowed to bring into the into the matches. Uh, are they going for the uh, mercenary Syrian archers? Doesn't look like it, but that would be a good target. It's not firing at the moment. He might be out of ammo, but it I don't think he is. Doesn't look like it. This guy, guy's ready to like launch another shot it looks like they're ready yeah yeah i think he's probably just holding waiting for a better mass because like that scorpion bolt will go through like three guys yeah yeah so it's... if you have a, a mass of people it just does outrageous damage this has been interesting we've seen a lot of scorpions in this tournament um ever since the rule was made about the interior artillery yeah um and it's been really cool to see i've been really i've been really happy to see that the rules that we put in did what we wanted them to do in shifting a little bit you know making the tournament a little more difficult in the way of like hey these are the things we always do well guess what for now we can't do that why right. because we want this to be a high skill tournament and we want things to you know, we want it to be a player versus player type deal. And, yeah. you know, I know that's something you stressed. And I think we accomplished that. Yeah. No, for sure. It's, it's never going to be perfect because Rome 2 is far from being a perfect game. You know, you're, but I think from what we've done in terms of rules and what, you know, you guys, I mean, honestly, you guys were the ones working hard on the rules. I mean, I just came in occasionally. was like, ah, I like that or I don't like that or whatever. But... <laughs> You know, you guys did a great job of uh, making it fair and, and interesting. And, yeah, I think it was a great tournament so far. Um, Galatia on the far – or, I mean, uh, um, Arverni's falling back. They they broke Ooh. Um, against Egypt there. That is not good. And all that's really over I here are archers. Yeah. They've got the Gen and then the Celtic Warrior. But, yeah, tiny, tiny little units here. Okay, so here's the, here's the thing. Attackers doing great here. Doing great. But they've got to be aware of the time. They're down to 17 minutes. They've got to hurry up. I know 17 sounds like a lot, but Rome 2, it's a grind. It, you know, and, and time will slip away very quickly. Dude, I've done that before where you're like, man, this is going really well. Ha ha. Wait, what? Where's yeah. the time? Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. Massilian Cav left, uh, coming in on the left of the defenders. Ooh. Where's that Iceni Cav? Did they fall that back? Oh, yeah, they fell They fell back. Yeah, he's going back. I think they're going back to the point right now. Yeah. 
I think that's a smart move. Really? I think the the ballistas or the scorpions out of ammo. I bet you because they're they're not doing they're not moving it. Or it could be trying to like finish off like its ammo before it goes or something. Oh, I see. They're gonna basically suicide like hold their ground, waste all the ammo, and and kind of fight as they charge forward. I get that's a pretty good idea. Oh wait, no, no, they're falling back. <laughs> Run away! Like uh. Pick him up and go. The Massilian wave you of know. units is about to storm in. <laughs> like, you know, if, if some of this infantry would just help us carry this, this would go a lot faster, okay? <laughs> I don't know if they're going to get it, man. Uh, It will be close. Because <laughs> is Egypt going up the ramp? No, so they might be able to get away just because Egypt is not going up that that central ramp right they're, there they're gonna have to send a unit back that's for sure uh and they're not they're leaving that art that artillery to die so chad informed me it is dodge dip duck dive and dodge the okay five d's of dodgeball <laughs> there you go thank you chat then if you can dodge a wrench you can dodge a scorpion bolt <laughs> yeah i don't think uh, that's true got, yep yeah, it's gone. <laughs> I think it goes a little faster. Yeah, a little faster, a little harder to see. You know, I'll take 191 kills on Scorpion, though, personally. Oh, yeah. I He's got his money. It depends what he killed, too. But, um, yeah, I'd say He got one it. Chevron out of it. So, like, one Chevron, he got at least semi-decent kills with it. Like, decent uh, quality. Mm -hmm. That's one handy way you look at the, you know with the better chevrons it'll you know you can see oh hey this actually killed good things yeah yeah all right Celius Cav like, is kind of pushing forward i think he's just trying to find you know see if he can catch anything running away <sighs> this is gonna come down to the wire um they if you look at the balance of power the attackers have the edge they have more troops they have better troops but is it can they break through the lines before the time is out and it's tough to say because this is such a tough position to slice through quickly you know the defenders do not have much quality left yeah so like they they don't have much in the way like they their only o sworn left is arverni's gen they got heroic nobles yep yeah one unit i think right yeah, and Bowie has Oathsworn as well. Oh, it's going to come down to... His? It's right on the uh, point near the flag, near the temple. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Thank you. Yeah, it's... It uh, two is Jen, yeah. It's probably... I mean... There's two ways to get up to that temple, but they could easily yep. hold it with their generals. Looks like they're going to try and hold the kind of the lower plaza here. Yeah. With the two points. I, our, our, uh, I see his cab is up on the hill on the far side. The big hill. Of the, oh, uh, yeah. The and city. it's hidden. It's hidden. Uh -huh, it's just sitting there. Ooh. Sneaky, sneaky. Mm. That will be exciting to see if they actually move them out. And the attackers, they need to cap. You see where the Massilian cab is? They got to dismount uh, and yeah, capture that. That will give a morale boost. Uh, to your, to your, I mean, neutralizing it is good too because it takes away the defender's morale boost. Mm -hmm. But, but still, get looks it. Looks like they're just moving out of it. Yeah. Maybe scouting a little bit, see what's defending what. I'm not sure. Celtic warriors charging in. The assault of this uh, last stand area is underway. Dur, 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 dur. Now for wrath. Now for ruin. <laughs> Both hailing us. There's no cap charge, so I guess that doesn't really. Nah, they dismounted. Sense, it's fine. <laughs> it's still epic. Yes, <laughs> one of the best movie scenes ever. Dude, it's so fantastic. Yeah. I, I don't know which one I like more, that one or the uh, the uh, the ride the Rohirrim speech from Return of the King. That one every time just gives me shivers. Oh, you mean like right before they charge in in Pelennor Pelennor Fields? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I always, it, man, a little teardrop comes out every time. Every time, you it know? It gets you, dude. 
But especially it's when like they're just they know they're gonna die. When Eowyn and and uh, Mary are both there too, when they shouldn't be, and they're like terrified, and she's like, "Courage, Mary." You know, it's like, Courage, "Oh Mary. my!" But your friends, you know, it's like, "Ah, oh, damn it." Courage, real Stop friends. It. Uh, even now, just thinking about it, it just oh, shivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great scene. One of the best movies ever. Anyways, back to this battle. <laughs> uh, they're doing a good job. Look at they're just they're counter pushing. It almost looks like the defenders. They're just yeah. wasting time, wasting time at this point. Yeah, literally. They're mm -hmm. just like, hey, come through here. You're gonna kill a lot of stuff, but can you do it fast enough? Yeah. Warriors, Trying to make them waste time. Counter pushing on the other side too. We got a small force oh, kind of yeah. going the far flank, yeah. Egypt, Egypt with the glacial Royal guard and Thorax sword. Which you gotta do. The sword van's not gonna last too long there. No, no, and you gotta do that to spread out the defenders a little thinner, so you can hopefully punch a hole through somewhere. Yes, sir. Ten minutes. Yeah, I just. 10 minutes for them to grind through some pretty solid units. You know, sword followers are not a unit that just dies. <laughs> no, yeah. And let's not forget the they've got a lot of archers left. Yes. Somebody asked me about that and they've got a lot of ammo. I mean, yeah. the Celtic war the Celtic bows have almost no kills. So like you're talking they probably at least have half ammo if not more than that. Mhm. Mm Balance of power is looking worse and worse for the defenders. But the time is looking bad for the attackers. It's it's going to be a close one. I wonder what they're going to do with that cav. I wonder if they're just going to hold on to it for now or um, like there's some there's some interesting places they might be able to get in here. Yeah, I think the cav is just kind of waiting for the infantry to break through Iceni and they're just going to pour in. Oh, yeah, they might. Are you talking about the Iceni Cav? Uh, yeah, Iceni. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, mm, probably go. I don't know. Maybe you should. Maybe they should wait with the Iceni Cav, even like when they break through the initial defense here. Yeah, I mean they can. They definitely can. Make the, the attackers fire coming from uh, Nubian bows onto the Iceni Gen in the back. Oh, that's good. That's a good target. Killed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> sword band, I mean, you're talking 75 armor for the heroic nobles, but he might be going for the sword band. They only have 45. I just, man, the, the attackers are just running out of time right now. You know, and honestly, like, I think if, I think if Bowie, I put his uh, Oath Sworn into combat right now, they they could do so much damage here. They've got one, I guess. They've got one in combat there on the right side. Yeah. But I think once again, like, I don't see, look where they're, if you look, zoom in a little bit, like, you can see that the Iceni Levy Freeman is the one in combat right now, and the Oathsworn is not. So right. the Oathsworn right now, once again, used it to headhunt but he's not even really in combat. So half of his units kind of just head hunting the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not good. And I'm seeing Galatia finally push up some Galatian legionaries. Probably had to sh probably should have moved them up a little bit sooner. I think he's doing okay though. I, it, I agree with that. But I, it's he's still fine, but still just out of practice, he should have just had him up there ready to go. All right, in Egypt. Yeah, I agree yeah, with that. Egypt's pushing. Pushing the right side. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I've noticed a couple different people for Egypt. They bring that carry and axeman general. Mm -hmm. Um. And I never know how I feel about it. Like, it does save you a lot of money, but it's also 
it's a pretty weak general unit, you know what I mean? Yeah, which are getting shot down right now by the defenders. I'm not a fan. Honestly, I'm not a fan. I don't like it. I always... I think I personally would rather have the Royal Peltis or the Silver, or the uh, Royal Thorax. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah, I, I like my general being tanky because... It's good practice, you know, like you keep your general alive. It's it kind of teaches you to keep your elites in reserve and uh, Yeah And it looks like the I, attackers are close to breaking through on the right yeah. I, uh, The uh, against Bowie I or against uh, Egypt or Egypt You're talking Iceni and Egypt uh, that you're it, looking at? the no Galatia on the right from the attack okay yeah yep. yep oh and and someone asked not being racist but why are the egyptian troops white well at the time <laughs> at the time of this egypt was actually heavily greek um so they had a lot of greek influence and i mean cleopatra was half greek if i'm not mistaken um but yeah, yeah. she was from the ptolemaic lion yeah yeah i believe she was the last of the line of ptolemy if i remember correctly I think so. Yeah, because like I mean, you're, you're talking. This is your your time of the Diadochi, which are the uh, the successor states for Alexander the Great. So you've got Ptolemy here in Egypt. You've got um, Seleucid, obviously, in Seleucid. Mm -hmm. um, you've got um, oh my gosh, I can't even think who went to Mas who went to Ma back to Macedon. Um, but yeah, so like you're right. It's very, very heavily Greek at the time. Yeah, yeah. The fake pharaohs, as they're called. <laughs> <laughs> the Egyptians loved Alexander. I mean, that's why Alexandria exists. You know, like. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he was like Alexander. I think gets a lot of credit for his general capabilities, but does not get very much credit for just like, you know, everybody knows him as the conqueror, but nobody knows him as the guy who said, hey. I just want everybody to be happy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I mean that's I mean a lot of his troops gave him crap for that, you know? It's like yep. you're treating I mean, these barbarians is, uh, with respect? Like what's wrong with yeah, you? Yeah. yeah. I mean he had multiple mutinies uh from that and what the other amazing part is he had multiple mutinies but still was able to like, hey guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Please be my friend and they were like, Okay, we love you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, okay, if we look back, they're still holding on to that flank. There's four minutes left. Uh, they're starting to run out of time. Where did that Iceni cap go? All the way in the back. I oh. think Basili is trying to chase it down. Uh, they probably spotted it. You, go kill that cavalry. But, but, but sir, I, I, really? Yes, chase them. Yeah, they, they just need a breakthrough somewhere. This is like, it's all in right here. It is all in. And the yeah, right I flank is looking the best. I would say the best push I see is the Egypt. Really? Egypt looks really good against Iceni right now. Well, on the right too, where Galatia. Well, it's okay. Well, our Vernie's coming in to reinforce it. Yeah, I mean, they, all there is, you're right. I mean, like, all there is is the Bowie I units. One of them is the Osworn. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised it's taken Bowie Eye this long to pull his general up. I mean, like, he could do a lot of damage in this combat right now. Especially with things getting really, really thin. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, Massili's gonna catch the cav. <laughs> Got a counter charge by the Iceni cavalry. Oh, yeah, there you go. So one of my chat was saying, Achilles got his name from his Achilles getting slash. That had to hurt so bad. <laughs> That's not quite how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> we got the name for the tendon because, you know, from Achilles getting shot in the tendon or sliced in the tendon. <laughs> yeah, but maybe he was Do you joking. think with Troy, is there going to be, like... Like, there's no way they don't put something like that in there, right? Like, I have no idea, man. I don't I, even know what you do. <laughs> like, yeah. I, 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 I don't think so, you know. 
Uh, but it's down to two minutes. I, I don't know. Uh, they need like a chain route it, to, to win. Yeah, that's their only chance at this point. Because mm -hmm. honestly, you get to, um, I believe it's 90 seconds. And the only way you can win at 90 seconds for the attacker is a chain route. Yeah. Because you need, a, you need 90 seconds to capture the victory point. So, you know, if you hit like under one nine or under uh, or 190 seconds i think it is sorry so at this point i think their only opportunity is they have to kill or break everything yeah yeah they got to kill some generals or or something to to cause yep mass break algorithm oh. so i mean bowie has got in now what's up uh the big break from galatia that is not good to see Casualties sustained. So Bowie, I lost all of his archers on the the cliff on the left. Oh geez, oh Just yeah. A, a massive green bodies. The Bowie, I, and Iverni hold strong. The two generals, and uh, I think that's game. Uh, at this point, I don't think there's enough time. Yeah, I think it's GG. Forty-five wow. seconds. There's too much left. Wow. Um, especially you got multiple gens left here. Or actually, is it just Bowie Eyes gen? No, you got Icenes as well. Yeah. Yeah, he, but I think that's GG. The Chad uh, generals holding the line. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's GG. So, Rising... Okay, two, two game matchup. Rising Kings will be moving on to the finale uh, unless something crazy happens in the next 17 seconds. Which, you never know. Crazy things happen, but it's not looking like it. Uh, so, the finale, guys, is going to be the Rising Kings versus the Devils in the Night. Uh, it's going to be on Saturday, and there it is. That is the victory. Uh, it's going to be on Saturday at 11 a.m. So, it's a little early in the morning, so make sure you uh, free up some space. Watch the epic finale. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the attackers did well. I mean, in terms of what they could have done better, the only just be a bit more aggressive time, you know, be a more, yeah. uh, you know, worry about time a little bit more. And they probably could have won that one because it was not close in terms of numbers. You know, the defenders would have lost if this, this was an unlimited time battle. Yeah, I think uh, they just let the time get away from them, unfortunately. I think, you know, that, that massive artillery barrage at the beginning, it got them a lot of breaches, but in the end, like, the breaches really didn't help them that much. You no, know? it um, didn't. It, they Yeah, it didn't. Um, it, it didn't even seem like the attackers, or I'm sorry, the defenders were going to hold. So they were probably, like, laughing in their heads, like, yeah, keep firing that artillery. We're just going to fall back anyways. You know, like, ha, joke's on you. Yeah, we're not even going to hold here. <laughs> so it looks like best, like most kills, you got uh, Agent Panda is Egypt. 2,467 kills. Wow, Egypt did really yeah, good nicely there. Nicely done. Yeah, unfortunately. 246 on the Galatian Royal Guard. Also, um, Massilia right behind him, you know, with 2,400. Mm -hmm. So they got the kills. It just it all came down to time, unfortunately. Um, so good job for Rising Kings. Certainly rising to the finale. Uh, this is going to be quite the matchup. I'm really excited for it. Um, so remember, guys, Saturday, 11 a.m. is going to be the finale. Uh, Ellington, thank you so much for joining me uh, for the semifinale. If you guys uh, haven't seen his channel, it's linked down in the video description, or it will be soon. So look out for that. <laughs> I, I don't know if I, I might have missed it there, but um, <laughs> check might out Ellington. I don't know. <laughs> check out Ellington. It, sh it will be. Uh, check out his channel, and uh, yeah, that's that's going to be it. Yeah, GG. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for letting me uh, hop in here and, and do this with you. It was a lot of fun. And, yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. It was great fun. It First time I've ever done like a dual stream like this, so it was very, very cool to do that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it definitely helps. <laughs> so helps my vocal cords to have someone else, you know, talk about the battle every once in a while so I can <laughs> just listen. 
I learned very quickly the uh, the keep a drink around while you're recording. Yes. Because... Yes. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Especially for these Rome two siege battles, they are long ones. But... <sighs> yes, absolutely. All right. Um, thank you, chat, for watching. Thank you, Ellington. Thank you to all the teams, everyone who participated. It's been a good tournament, but it comes to the close. On Saturday, we will have our champion. Exciting times, and I'll see you guys then. All right, Apollo, thanks so much.